Hello and good morning, Eric. How are you doing today? I'm good. That's awesome. Dude, you got to- I am you doing gotta... a lot of talking this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Are you doing math while you're doing it too? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not much of a math guy, as I'm sure will come up in our discussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the way that National Geographic Kids has put together. It's a numbers game because you know math is that one thing that you know I, they either like it or they don't. Young adults and kids, because it's it, and it's like, how does it play out in the real world? Well, it does, and you prove it, sir. Well, that it's funny that I've I've been saying that all morning to the people I've been talking with is that like I'm not really a math guy. Math was not my my best subject in school by a long shot. And I often felt like, why are they teaching me this math? Why are they teaching me this science? When will I ever use this in the real world? Right. But writing this writing this book and really really reading what Patrick Mahomes said in the foreword, um, there's you know, I mean, it's more that there's numbers in football than math, but there's a lot more math and science than I realized. And I think kids will realize that too. And hopefully you know, I don't know that it will make them better at math, but it might make them more interested and, and agreeable to being taught math because they'll see, yeah, this, this really does have a place in the real world in things that I like that I didn't see math in before. Well, it, it does help out. I'm, I'm a third degree black belt in martial arts. And the thing is, is that math was very important to us because it helped us with distance. We, and so and when we would go to these tournaments and stuff like that, we would always think about numbers and things because it would it would put us in a place of reality. Yeah, that's very interesting because it's the same sort of thing. Like, um, I don't think a lot of quarterbacks are thinking, geez, how many newtons of force do I need to put behind <laughs> this ball as I'm throwing it? But but they are in a – they, they've done it so long, it, it's kind of – they do it without thinking about it. But it is it is part of the game. I mean, the numbers, you know, how many yards do I need for a first down? How, how much, you know, clock time do we have to, to try and make this drive? I mean, that's more obvious and maybe slightly less mathy, but it is all, you know, the math and science and the perception of just, you know, thinking your way through what we think of as a physical game. Well, if it wasn't for football cards, I guarantee you my, my grandson would still be struggling with, <laughs> with, with numbers as well as reading because, I mean, those cards became his life, and it also was his conversation starter. Yeah, well, I mean, I grew up, I'm Canadian, I grew up near in Toronto, and it was the same with hockey cards, like hockey cards, you know, were probably my introduction to statistics and, and, and the world and, and gave you something to talk about. So, yeah, same thing with your son and the football card. Well, in, in the book, It's a Numbers Game, you guys really, you also include football history. That's very important to, you know, it's not lot of, uh, all about today's superstars. Someone had to inspire them to bring things forward as well. Yeah, in most of the writing I do, I said I'm, I'm not much of a math guy. I, I am a history and and geography guy. I like, you know, where the game came from and how it got to the places where it played. So it was always important to me to include the history of football and, and the great players who came before. I mean, many of them, you know, I grew up in the 70s. I mean, in the 60s too, but I don't remember the 60s much. Um, so I, I tried to, you know, tip of the hat to the people I watched and liked. But, you know, right back to the beginnings of football and, and guys like Jim Brown, who aren't the beginnings, but they're slightly before my time. I mean, that's what they, they are, the giants the game has been built on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, especially today, what, what I like to do is uh, I'll see somebody with a, a wearing a red jersey with the number 23 on it, and I'll walk up to him and I'll say, do you know what that 23 represents? No. You're kidding me. I said, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, Michael Jordan was the guy. Okay. And it's like, wow, this, yeah, this has got to change. Yeah. This culture has to change. No, it's funny. Like, as I say, I, I, I'm a Canadian. I mostly write about hockey, and it's odd to me to think like how long ago now Wayne Gretzky is yes. and that kids don't know Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan and, and Muhammad Ali, you know, guys like that. I mean, it's, it's, but I guess it's just the natural way of things, but it still seems strange. Are math skills important to play even hockey? I mean, I mean, it's, 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 I realize it's a speed game and I've sat in that booth with those announcers and I have no idea how those announcers do what they do, <laughs> but, but my God, I mean, it, it's, it's all got to be like you said, math and science. Yeah, well, there, as I, the, I, I really came to realize how much more math and science there is behind any of this stuff. But, but as I, say, I, I don't know, like I don't know that being good at math would make you a good football player or hockey player or basketball mm -hmm. player, because I, I think it's innate. Like again, in basketball too, you know, the angle of this shot, uh, how much height, how much strength, how am I going to get it over that guy? 
I mean, a quarterback making a pass too. But I, I don't know how much they're they're they're. I mean, I think they make the calculations without even being aware they're making the calculations. Um, so, and maybe the broadcasters have to be a little bit more aware because they have to <laughs> describe it and explain it to us. Oh, it's, it's like they're living in the future is what they're doing when you, when you when you listen to a hockey announcer and that that as well as you know soccer. So one of the one things that I've, I've loved about numbers is that my, my daughter graduated from UCLA uh, in from with linguistics. She's got that in her background and now she's this huge accountant. See, and, and the thing is, is that I asked her. I said, what, "What? How did you go from linguistics to the to numbers?" And she says, "Numbers are a language of their own." Do you believe in that? Huh, you know what? I hadn't really thought of. Yes, I mean it is. It's not something I kind of like. I've been saying about these. It's not in the front of my brain. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think. I mean, people who are good at math. I mean, they talk about that. Like you, you sort of see it, and it's logical, and it makes sense in a way that you know talking with people doesn't always make sense. But the numbers always is it. The numbers don't lie, as we like to say. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, I think. I mean, I think if I mean I as I'm not a math person. It kind of intimidates me and always has, um, but I think for people who who understand math, it is it is a it's a language and a poetry all of its own. One of the things that National Geo is so good at is that they create books that that reach you know, more than one generation. You being a part of this book, what what did you learn that you're carrying forward or passing through these pages? <laughs> I, I learned even more. It's funny because, as I've said, I, I I mostly write about hockey. Yeah. Uh, and when I did a book for National Geographic a few years ago about soccer, it was to be searching and learning about a sport I knew very little about. I mean, football, I've always been a football fan. I mean, I grew up in Toronto. Um, but but the, the, the way the game developed, how I mean, I knew it sort of came from rugby and that there was this sort of one game between McGill University in Montreal and Harvard in, in the Boston area in the early 1870s that sort of started breaking the game away from rugby and moving it, and it's interesting to see how it moved in different directions in Canada and the United States. I mean, it's basically the same game, but I think all Americans know that the Canadian football field is, is longer and wider. Yeah. Uh, there's an extra player. The rules are somewhat different. The Canadian football is actually closer to the way football began than American football. Uh, and I just I, I thought that was pretty interesting the way the game the, the game developed similarly but differently in two countries as as so much of our our cultures have really in Canada and the United States so close together and yet the games are so different but yet at the same time it's the same game yeah <laughs> yep exactly yep so where can listeners go to find out more about what you bring Eric because I mean I mean you're such an interesting person in the way of of sharing the story of sports and bringing sports to the forefront rather than just what we're seeing right there on well, I, I have a website where I, I, you know, certainly list the books that I have for sale. But I also post stories about sports history. It is mostly hockey, but sometimes football, sometimes baseball, sometimes basketball. Even uh, it's ericzweig.com. That is just my name, all as one word: uh, e r i c z w e i g dot com. Lots. It's funny. There's one of the stories I have on my website that I found while I was researching this book, and I had written it in an early draft, but it didn't make the final no. cut. Was uh, this this uh, football player in in the 1880s who who made a 65 yard field goal? And I thought, how can that be? Like, how could they kick those big <laughs> old old time fat leather heavy footballs? 60. But it was it was fascinating the story of how he did it, how he felt he had done it how it was tracked and, and, and became like, it, it was like he did it in the 1880s and in 1915, it sort of was rediscovered in a, in a football record book, even back then. And then there were so many stories about, could he have done it? Did he do it? And people writing into newspapers going, yo, I was at the game. I saw him do it. I played on the team. And finally, like he, he spoke out on it. It was, it was really neat, but uh, it was too much. I mean, it was numbersy, but it was too long a story, I guess, for this, but it's, it's on my website. I, it's it's a few years ago, but it was uh, that was one of my favorite stories I've ever come across doing any of the work I've done on any of my books. Oh my God, the weather had to have been perfect, no breeze, or or there was just enough wind in the sky that carried that ball. Yeah, I, I think there was the wind behind him, and he had said, you know, he had practiced. He and a friend, and it's interesting that 
that, you know, the, the talking about things that you sort of take for granted, like, you know, if we held the ball on its end at a bit of a, a, a an angle and if you kicked it at the right spot, it was like all the stuff that kickers just know without <laughs> even knowing why they know it now had to be sort of developed, and this guy was among the first. <laughs> I love it. Eric, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always, always going to be open for you. Oh, sure, great. Excellent. Will you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. You too.